I live at 3751 Chesapeake Avenue. I live at the Woodlake Manor. In this building, I've been here since 1993, 20, a little over 20 years. In September 1st, 2011, we received a change in tenancy statement that was sent out to all the tenants in a 228 unit building that we had to pay our rent online. And uh, they gave us 30 day notice that we would have to pay online. Me being uh, computer illiterate, I couldn't do it. They were not gonna accept any other form of payment. This was their quote unquote effort at going green. Jones and Jones they had a campaign to get rid of tenants, elderly tenants, who have been paying their rent on time, that by moving us out, they can get higher rents. We formed a tenants association. If we don't protest it, no, nobody will, and the uh, squeaky wheel gets the grease. Because they're a major corp, multi-million dollar corporation with teams of lawyers on the payroll, they ignored us. I first heard about the case at Woodlake Manor from Larry Gross at Coalition for Economic Survival. It was old people that were getting pushed around by a policy that everybody could understand was unfair. When the lawyers came, it was like everybody was like fired up because they were able to uh, challenge them legally in the courts. And as we entered into negotiations with the landlord, it was very clear that the landlord was not going to rescind the policy. We wrote our check, they give us a receipt, we wrote on the receipt, we disagree with this policy, it violates city law, state law, and human rights. We filed our lawsuit in the court, and ultimately, once that lawsuit was on file, um, the landlord did rescind the policy, um, which was a victory for us. We won and became a state law. As a result of the Woodlake Manor case, the state Senate bill that was introduced by Senator Ted Lieu, that passed unanimously in both houses in California. The city council passed a resolution saying it is against the law in the city of Los Angeles to evict tenants because they don't pay their rent online. The tenants were ecstatic when they received the letters because this was their victory. Well, I found out that Patsy uh, really helped us. She helped us fight back and get the policy changed the way it should be. She was a whole kit and caboodle. Thank you, Bedzek. Thank you, Bate Sedek. We had this crazy idea 40 years ago, Louie and I. We were both aware that there were people that needed legal services, where there were poor Jews who also needed services. We had a huge wall to climb over. Virtually every kind of social service agency was organized through the Jewish Federation Council of Greater Los Angeles. That feeling of the 60s and people protesting and so forth was still uh, alive. Many of us still had long hair and, and, uh, and beards and they looked at us with a wary eye as to who the heck we were. So we just decided, why don't we start something on our own? We really thought that if we could keep it going for six months or a year, that we would, it would be a victory. Beit Sedek started with a small staff, a few volunteers, and a mission to provide access to justice for everyone. I'll never forget the day Felicia Grunfeder walked into our little storefront on Fairfax when she was a young girl in the Warsaw Ghetto. To save her, her mother placed her in a coffin uh, with other Jews who had perished during the night and was taken around by a wagon to the wall of the ghetto and thrown over to a waiting Gentile family. Amazingly, Felicia and her mother reunited after the war and eventually they moved to Los Angeles. She was a model for Max Factor. By her early 30s, she began to develop all sorts of, of psychological issues and qualified for Social Security benefits. But then when our government learned that she received reparations from Germany, our government cut her off of the Social Security benefits, saying that she was, by virtue of receiving the reparations, uh, too rich. So we took the case and Though we lost at three levels of administrative review, and we lost before a federal magistrate who uh, threw out the case, Felicia was courageous enough to say, fight on. Judge Harry Pregerson rounded up the majority of votes necessary to get the Ninth Circuit to vote to reconsider our case. We won, and her benefits were reinstated, and about 5,000 other survivors across the country in the same situation had their Social Security benefits reinstated as well. Felicia Grunfeder was the heroine of this case, and Beth Sedek made it possible. When I got to Beth Sedek in 1986, 
uh, that Sadek had already started to save the homes of the mostly elderly Eastern European immigrants who lived in the Cadillac Hotel on the Venice boardwalk. The case was pending. And I brought in a team that included volunteer attorneys, including my wife, Gail. Picture a room in which uh, many of your most opinionated relatives all talking at once and arguing a little bit about what might be the best course of action. By the time we finished, that Sedek had succeeded in assuring that the tenants could stay in the Cadillac Hotel for the rest of their lives at their then very low rents. And one of the tenants, uh, I think very eloquently stated to a newspaper after we resolved the case, old people are like trees. If you lift up their roots, we die. She recognized that Beth Sedek had been a partner with her in saving her life. And what it represents motivated and continues to motivate Beth Sedek and our lawyers and our volunteers and all our staff every day. Terry Friedman and Mike Feuer's work was culminating in the passage by Congress of legislation to ensure that Holocaust survivors uh, would not uh, lose any of their United States public benefits. President Clinton actually signed into law that legislation to protect Holocaust survivors. It was quite a way to be introduced to the national presence and impact of Beit Sedek. I had been at Beit Sedek for about two weeks, and I was sitting in my office one day, and I heard some commotion out in the hallway, and I heard somebody yell, hey, you can't go in there. Uh, and the next thing I knew, this teeny little elderly, pretty frail, beautiful woman walked into my office, and she said, are you in charge here? And I stood up, and I sort of muttered, well, yeah. And she came over, gave me a big hug and a kiss, said thank you. She had been very, very ill. And through an administrative law proceeding, we had won her benefits that she felt had saved her life. Uh, I had never, ever in my life been hugged by a client. It really brought home for me right at the beginning what an impact this work has on individual clients and on the lawyers. None of the work Beit Sedek does would be possible without the help of our pro bono attorneys, volunteers, staff, and your support. Standing in front of your clients and looking into their tear-filled eyes and, and hearing them tell you that they've never had anybody stand up for them is a, is a profound experience. I was really thrown off guard and it was really moving to, to see these people, they just, they, you know, they'd hug you. By having a pro bono attorney working alongside that staff attorney, that pro bono attorney may be able to help five to ten additional clients every single year. I decided to go to law school in part because of Bet Sedek. I can do a lot of good as an attorney by continuing to volunteer for Bet Sedek. We get calls from people who are in dire straits who really need assistance. The whole agency is overwhelmed with cases and uh, our help is necessary. In Kyiv, I am engineer electric and I work for a big uh, engineering company. And this company built Chernobyl Atom Station. When Chernobyl happened, it was a huge disaster, and people did not even realize the magnitude of this disaster. What we have, we have uh, this disometer. It's the small, small apparat what uh, uh, show how many radiation you have each day. They were just going beyond the numbers, and. Uh, people who actually work there realize it makes not a, no point to even wear those, and uh, they just continue working. I cannot concentrate by my work because I all time so what's going on, what's going on, <laughs> how much I keep this radiation. He ha just have a bad sleeping problem. He have a high blood pressure. He take a lots of pills. My parents moved to Los Angeles to be with us in 1992, and within a year, my father received the reparation. In 1992, I started to receive the SSI. In July 13, SSI, Office SSI, sent to paper to me, come to the interview. I come to the interview, they ask me, 
only uh, general information. About a year ago, they received a letter from the Social Security Administration that they owe Social Security Administration tremendous amount of money. It's so stressful for one year. We just write paper and letters. When they get hit with something like this, in which the government comes to them and be like, you owe us money, they get very scared. She not sleep. She very nervous. It's 100% depression. So for three, four months, we were trying to find somebody to provide the legal help to us. And finally, we met Betsedic. When Social Security looked at the statements, they saw that they had more than $3,000 in their bank account. Um, but the reality was that this was Holocaust money in the account, and it should be exempt under federal law. The Social Security office wanted them to pay back $37,000. Because some of it was still in his bank account during the period when he was receiving benefits, the benefits workers determined that uh, he had too much money in the bank to qualify for the benefits. They also lose their linked Medi-Cal for their health care needs. So it can lead to not being able to pay your rent, not having enough to eat, not being able to get the health care you need. It can be life and death. The Fridlians relied on SSI as their only source of income. Under the law, Social Security is allowed to take up to 10% of your SSI money, uh, and that's what Social Security was planning to do um, until Betsedic was able to get involved. Nick put together an amazing presentation of our case. After they, they dismiss this case. They return this money. And nobody help us before we come into your company. Immediately after I saw how, how successful Nick was with helping my grandparents, I was, I, put, I was put in contact with him and I volunteered to help here during my fall semester of my second year of law school. In the United States, there's over 100,000 Holocaust survivors still living but there are a significant number of clients still in need. Betsedic saved us. Thank you, Mr. Nicholas, and thank you, Betsedic, for your work, for everything you do to our family. If we remember this all our life. And the Holocaust Survivors Justice Network really captures and embodies the evolution of Betsedic in so many ways. It started uh, not unlike the storefront on Fairfax where we had Holocaust survivors come in with Betsedek staff. It became this international network using modern technology uh, to bring together 150 partner organizations that helped thousands and thousands of people around the world. Within the first year and a half, we served over 4,000 clients and recovered millions of dollars in reparations for them, all coordinated by this little original storefront office on Fairfax in Los Angeles. When I step back and think about how remarkable it is that the man who, with others, founded this place uh, was the person primarily responsible for us having the Holocaust Survivors Justice Network. All you have to do is look at what the mission of Beit Sedek is, and you will understand why people are so passionate about maintaining their involvement uh, with Beit Sedek. Anybody and everybody, regardless of who they are, where they came from, or what their situation is, can come to us for help. We had this crazy idea 40 years ago, and here we are 40 years later serving tens of thousands of people in L.A. and hundreds of thousands of people uh, across the country. Why Betsedex remained so strong for 40 years, it stayed true to its mission of providing access to justice for everyone. We are now helping more than 15,000 clients per year. Los Angeles has been fortunate for the last 40 years to have Betsedex there for people who needed us the most. Now it's your turn to help ensure that for the next 40 years, we can still be here to meet the needs of the most vulnerable members of our community. Help us bring justice to those who need it most. Please join me in supporting the future, the next 40 years and beyond, of this remarkable organization. Beit Sedek saves lives. It preserves justice. It makes our democracy work. I'm Joshua Molina. I hope that all of you will join us and help advance this mission and bring justice to those who need it most. Thank you.